Hey everyone, thanks for joining me in today's episode of Super Smooth's Test It, Fix It, and Run It, where I take one of my locomotives that's been sitting around and I test it, and if necessary, fix it, and I'll definitely run it. So let's see what today's locomotive is. Alrighty, well today I hope I have a treat for you, something that you're going to enjoy, and it's this 462 Pacific USRA style with Chicago Northwestern. Hmm, it's kind of... Something rattling a little bit, but let's pull it out of here. The advertisement said that it runs just a little bit and then stops. So that's that sounds like it could be an interesting little problem. Ah, there's the rattle. Fair enough. Let's figure out what's going on. Let's take a look. Uh, it's, eh, someone's put a little bit of time, but not a lot of grace into repairing this. Assume it probably popped off of there. The bell's fully intact, though. That's nice. Everything actually looks pretty good. It's one of their lower-priced ones. Pretty severe flashing. But doesn't look like it's been run hardly at all. In fact, it looks... Yeah, it looks almost new in that sense. I don't think it's been run. They must have had the problem pretty early on. Or maybe it started after they smashed up the headlight. Let's take a look. Everything looks pretty clean in there. Hmm. All right, fair enough. Not sure I don't hear anything rattling otherwise. Yeah, everything looks okay. It's pretty typical for one of these. It's pretty clean. Yeah, looks all right. Not a ton of corrosion or anything like that on the wipers for that. Tender looks, hmm, not quite sure what that is. Tender looks pretty decent. Although it looks like someone has, <laughs> someone in this household absolutely hate lights because they also kind of had a dodgy attempt to repair that. No problem though, it's pretty fixable if that's the way I want to go with it. Otherwise everything looks pretty good. Yeah, it's, that's uh, some pretty ham-fisted gluing there. <laughs> no problem, okay, whatever. Let's go ahead and just oil this, see what we get, who knows. Um, yeah, if it hasn't been running a while and they haven't really tried to do much with it, I'm sure things have dried out just a little bit. So let's go ahead and put this up on the track, see how it runs. Let's go ahead and oil it up. It's uh, it's kind of it feels kind of chunky when it's rolling down. So let's go ahead and pull off the keeper and oil it. When I started making this video, I found out that I had 1,985 subscribers, and 1985 is the locomotive number of this 1907 Consolidated run by the ATSF, and also this K4S run by Pennsylvania. All right, well, this is, yeah, everything looks pretty dry in here. So that could be causing it. So let's go ahead and just put some Super Smooth on the bearings. And let's put some Super Smooth Teflon on there and see how that goes. I don't, as chunky as this was running, I have some severe doubts whether that's going to be the entire problem. But let's, let's see, you know what, let's put just a very small dab of penetrating oil onto that bearing of the motor and let's let's see what we get out of this. It almost seems like lubricating it made it worse. I don't know, it's running a little bit now. It still feels awful chunky though, awfully chunky. Let's go back and forth a few times with it. Let's see if, it has a lot of stiction up front, a ton. I have to boost it. Let's take it down to the main track. And I'm sorry, I forgot to film that. Well, I didn't forget, the camera kind of failed, but I don't know if you could see coming out of the cab, we do have smoke. And as much as I appreciate that in a steam engine, I promise you the firebox is not active since this is a model and it's not real. So that's that's a bad sign that we got smoke coming out of there. So let's go ahead and pull off the retainer and pop this motor and see what we get. And this is a standard fork style. 
connection, so it should just pull apart no problem. May have to kind of, there may be, yeah, let's just pop that out of there. Okay, let's go ahead and get this motor out of the wiring harness because I don't wanna, I just don't wanna mess with it. It'll be easier just to use alligator clips, so. Pull the motor out of there, hook it up, spin it. Uh, it's spinning okay in that direction. It feels, I don't feel it resisting a whole lot. Hmm, all right. Let's turn it around. Oh, look at that. The stiction's pretty bad. I actually have to force it around. Let's put some load on it and see what happens. Hmm. <clears throat> That seems pretty suboptimal. Oof, yeah, yeah, that's uh, it's not good at all. So, hmm, it's kind of pretty in a way, but every time it sparks, it's gonna get, just get worse and worse. And it looks like a pretty new motor. The commutator isn't really, doesn't really show any real signs of a lot of use or anything. But I, hmm, not quite sure what's going on. Maybe, do they get some oil down in here? I'm not sure what that gooby stuff is, but it doesn't matter. This motor is, dead, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Let's go ahead and grab another one that I have in my parts bin, and actually this motor is pretty new. So I'm, I pulled it out of another project that I'm gonna remotor, so let's go ahead and put power into it. No problems, put some load onto it. And I, yeah, it looks a whole lot better. We're not gonna have any problems with that. Okay, that's, that's a lot better, so we just need to get a new motor into here, and hopefully that'll help. <laughs> a lot. Certainly, again, I appreciate the realism that they were going for with this steam engine with the smoke, but there's, it's, it's not really worth anything if it doesn't run. All right, so the old retainer is a little too small for the new motor. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. So I thought these motors were pretty standard otherwise, but I guess not. So I'm going to have to ream this out with a Dremel tool, and through the magic of video editing, I was able to do that really quickly. So let's go ahead and place this back down in here. And I've got the new coupler on it as well. It should hopefully fit right in. Hopefully that won't require any kind of digging out. It looks like it won't. Just kind of got to get this in there. So pop this back in here and I think we'll be fine. Well, it explains the chunkiness and explained the ultra high realism smoke. So very good, and there it is. Let's get the screw in there. Fun times. Gotta love flatheads. Uh, oh, I actually got it in sync the first time. This is this is my kind of day. Not I actually had a spare motor sitting around, and that thing sunk immediately. So perfect, no problem. We'll go ahead and get this soldered back up to the wiring harness, and I think we'll be in good shape. There we go. No problem whatsoever. Okie dokie. Let's get this back on the track and see if it runs better. Now it's missing the weight, so I may have to apply that myself. But I think we're in pretty good shape here. That may have not seemed like very much, but I can already tell just by the way it feels that it's running a lot better. So let's go ahead and finagle all these parts back in here. I forgot the light. Let's get the light in there. Dock on it. These things are kind of a pain. This is partly why it's good not to glue that thing back in there because it's kind of easier to fish the light through, but I won't worry about it. Okay. We'll get this all back in there and get all that back together. Fun times, fun times. And we piece this. Sorry about this. It's so hard to do this through the camera lens. It really is. Okay. So here we go. Getting it back together. We'll screw. Oh, come on, doggone it. Okay. Screw everything back down, and I think we will be in pretty good shape. All right, now let's put it on the track and see what we get. Well, there you have it. Pretty simple problem, all things considered. So as long as you were willing to take it apart and take a look at what the motor was doing, but of course the smoke helped out. Sorry, I had these Erie cars on the track already from another locomotive I was testing. I don't actually have 
I have one Chicago Northwestern passenger car, and I have a couple freight, but it's not a line I collect a whole lot, so I guess I got something now. But it runs very nice with a new motor. I don't think this had much running time at all. It probably was a defective from the factory, and they threw it down on the track, and it didn't work, and for whatever reason, they didn't want to deal with it, or they thought they'd deal with it later, and they never got around to it. So finally, this thing has some life, and I was happy to give it life. So I'm, I'm really, really, really appreciative that this came across my desk. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope uh, it helped you. If you're having problems diagnosing something and you see that kind of smoke or if you have too much stiction and too much grindiness out of the motor and it doesn't make sense, try changing it out perhaps. Hey, thanks a bunch for being here. I really appreciate it. I'm glad this one worked out so simply. And, uh, you know, if you want to help me out, please like and subscribe. And, hey, leave me some comments. Do you have one of these? I'd like to know what your experience has been. So take care. Happy model railroading. Once again, thanks for being here. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.